got me feeling like I'm academics. Can't ride no way. So while we're at it, while we're at it, what am I trying to? Um, remember the whole thing where Shakur Stevenson told Mason Cameron he'll knock him the fuck out, and Mason Cameron said, "What the fuck? Like, bro, why, why are you mad at us? You ain't let your hands go." And then Jay Prince came in and said, "Yo, I'm I'm taking all fades. <laughs> like that was kind of whatever, right?" He said, I'm, he said, numbers don't lie, haters do. Sorry to just to tell you to select few of haters and you can see the proof. Blah, 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 blah. And to all the haters who want to escalate this outside the ring, I'm his manager and I handle all business outside the ring. In other words, Mason Cam, I will fade all of his shots, take all bets. Wow. We saw what Mason Cam said. Here we go. Take all his shots and you handle everything out the ring. All right. So then we talking to you then. All right. <laughs> we start with you. Since you the big homie, we start with you. That's how it goes around here. Um, I, I want to just start off by saying you are so like lacking self-awareness. Like when you when you give such a lackluster performance, and then you think you can make threats to people because you gave a lackluster performance? Pause. You don't have the right to tell me what I should like or to tell Cam what he should like. That's that's not your place. Like, art is subjective, right? So if art is subjective and I don't like something, you, you can't really get mad at us because we don't like something. And you're standing there. With two, I mean, two Hall of all right, go I got this one. You going to take all his fades and, and take all his shots and you handle everything out the ring. All right. So then we talking to you then. All right. <laughs> we start with you. Since you the big homie, we start with you. That's how it goes around here. Um, I, I want to just start off by I don't, I don't get what you mean. <laughs> We're not your little niggas. Like, for real, all that big homie stuff, that's for little niggas. Little niggas <laughs> have big homies. We're not little niggas, so we don't even respect big homies. I know Killer doesn't, and for me, I never respected niggas in the streets. That's why I always got the problems I got. Niggas would tell me, Maze, chill. No, chill for what? Who is this nigga? <laughs> That's how I feel listening to this, man. Like, I want to respect you, but I can't. And I'm going to tell you why. Because if I got a little, like, the dudes that raised me, if I was out of pocket, they would tell me I'm out of pocket. They wouldn't let me put them on a crash out mission. They would say, yo, Maze, listen, listen. Mm -hmm. Around here. We don't send niggas to do nothing for us. We don't pay niggas to handle our problems. Mm -hmm. You got to put in your own work around. I don't, I don't get what you mean. <laughs> we, you failed. You failed. You failed. You failed. I'm He's telling you this. You're a six-year-old gangster. And I, I, I'm, I stand. My name is Mace. I stand by this message. Let me explain something to you, bro. Mace said it exactly. You 60, nigga. Ooh, you 60. Like what are you talking about? What are you? T Bro, I lost mad respect for you because I used to have mad respect for you. When you had Shakur with you, when you line um, young boy NBA up, why the fuck you got Shakur with you? And this is why he acting like that. This is exactly why he acting like that. Uh, talking about you got young boy NBA umbrellas in his keys to car. Young boy NBA told y'all niggas eat a dick. This is what he said. This is what young boy NBA said. Wack 100 was the most disrespectful. Wild disrespect. I ain't even gonna repeat this shit Wack 100 said. Mad disrespect. Drake is beefing with Kendrick Lamar as we speak. I have not heard. This is the first time Drake... <laughs> you failed. Just be going viral. You bugging. You bugging, James. You bugging, my nigga. And I'm gonna leave it at that. I don't know what bet you talking about or all that other slang down. Bet it. Whatever bet you talking about, bet it. I don't know what bet it. <laughs> Betty. You wanna, you wanna bet it, bet? I don't know what to bet Before we even move on from this, I gotta ask, do you guys feel like there's a beef? Because there's literally a full on article, even from Billboard, talking about, you know, the Shakur versus Mason Cameron beef explained, giving timeline and timestamps. 
in post? Do you guys even feel like there's a beef or you guys really feel like it was never that big of a deal? <laughs> no, I don't think it was a beef at all. I, I think we, we, we're going to continue to do exactly what we do. Before we slow down, we're going to pick up the speed. We're okay. few things. So that was said. And um, then we get to a really cryptic post, not by Jay Prince, because we already saw his cryptic post about he'll take all shot and, you know, you take all fades and he'll take all bets. But the son, Jay Prince, he got online and he said this. You need to be fucking me up, right? Because niggas try to glorify bullshit. Like you niggas try to glorify soft shit. Niggas try to glorify niggas that ain't that niggas that's flaw. Nigga, we know when niggas flow when we deal with them in the streets. We know when the nigga flow. Like we understand that they flow. We don't capitalize off their flawness though, because we'll capitalize off real shit. We ain't gonna capitalize off no nigga being flawed, weak as hell. Nigga, we understand what a nigga weak as hell. Then he a street, call himself a street nigga. He could be a street nigga, but he's still weak as hell. We don't capitalize and try to glorify this shit. Nah, we gonna sit and have conversations about niggas as strong as us. We gonna have conversations about niggas as weak as hell. You need to be fucking me up. Okay. Now, I understand nothing of what Jay Prince Jr. said. This is Jay Prince Jr., if you didn't know. That's not senior, but it's junior. But I got to say, man, um, I've communicated with a lot of people. And I think I know what's going on. So what I've gathered is Houston is like a different world. That supposedly Jay Prince Jr., no, Jay Prince and his sons, operate with some wild amount of power and respect and immunity that doesn't exist in any other part of the world. That's why you see Mason Betha and you see Cameron Giles react to them this way because these guys are acting like they're in Houston when they're talking not to people from Houston. Now, I, I have to put this in perspective, okay? This is all things I've heard. I've talked to a lot of Textonians. I don't know if that's what they call themselves. But I've heard that Jay Prince and his sons have unlimited power when it comes to Houston. Like, for example, I asked the question. I said, well, can't be that much power. And everybody told me, yeah, I know it is that much power. Jay Prince is probably the entity that's bigger than anybody in any major city. And I kept asking questions. And I said, what do you mean? And I even brought up the story I told y'all before. I said, you know, 6ix9ine told me when he got arrested for federal um, on his RICO case, he said another department came in and questioned him to say, do you know anything about Jay Prince? To me, it told me the feds wanted to get Jay Prince. But it also told me they've been unsuccessful. What it also told me was that they're really, maybe there's something there behind everything we see. We see the courtesy calls in the San third. But then a, a few stories was told to me. I'll, 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 I'll purport one of them. And... I've heard this from six people so far, so I'm inclined to believe it. And I had never knew this is how Houston ran or that anybody could have this amount of power, but apparently this is the case. I had this one question here. I said, if Jay Prince Jr. or Jay Prince has so much power, how does his son go to jail? Like, don't tell me a nigga has all the power in the world, but they're still going to jail. Because the, the, the what what was being described to me was a cartel YouTube premium was a cartel like influence that police, DA, and everybody else will never fuck with certain people. And I said, Nah, what the fuck? 
By the way, this was Jay Prince Jr. getting out of prison. <laughs> yeah, this is him getting out of prison. And this is right after he got out. Tell him, baby, what's up? So mob ties this guy who also pressed 6 9 And then I got sent down a rabbit hole that I've been trying to figure out for the last probably couple weeks. But it only convinced me that everybody who told me this was right. Maybe Jay Prince and them, they're that people. And it might sound wild. I'll give, an, I, I, I'll give you some of what I know. So my question was, well, if a nigga really is that powerful, because everybody keeps saying Jay Prince is the boogeyman, how the fuck does he get sent to jail? Because he got sent to jail and got released at a certain point. I think that video might be deleted. No, he's still up. How? How? If you're that powerful, you never go to jail. And what was described to me... By the way, this is Johnny Dang right here, the jeweler. Walks out to a million dollar jewelry and a photo shoot. Gets his hair cut in this anther. And what was explained to me, even to right now, feels bizarre. Let me explain. So here's a story I got told. Jay Prince Jr. Apparently, he's on a very short list of the people who even beat a gun charge in New York. So he got caught with a gun in New York, beat it. Or somehow escaped and got probation. Now, if we talk about the reason why he went to jail, this sounds like fairy tale. But I have to, and the only reason why I'm even putting, letting y'all know this is because when we think about anything to do with Jay Prince, I think most contemporary people in hip hop is like, what the fuck? Why everybody, why does nigga keep doing courtesy calls and talking slow? Why does his son think whatever? Well, hear this. So I hear. Basically, nobody fucks with the Prince family in Houston. Nobody. Including the cops. The cops know what it is. Jay Prince Jr. allegedly, one day, is driving home drunk. Hey, I'm the king of this bitch. Why not? While driving home drunk. A rookie cop, it's important to say rookie cop, because if it was any other seasoned cop, they would have known that's the Prince family and shit goes different. It's important. A rookie cop pulls him over and asks him to get out. Somebody said, act you a fool if you believe that. I'm going to show you all the proof you need. So you're going to tell me if this is cap. I would. It, what I'm saying to you you're going to say his cap until I show you the proof. Hear the story. Rookie cop tells him, hop out the car. He's already like, what do you mean hop out the car? I'm Jay Prince Jr. Hop out the car. Reluctantly, he hops out the car. Supposedly, they either find that he's, he's um, intoxicated or whatever. Um, they also asked to search him. This is where it gets interesting. Jay Prince Jr. says to the cop, nigga, don't touch me. You can't search me. Now, this is going to sound foreign to y'all because the peons like you and me can't tell the police they can't search you. But he told the cop that. You can't search me. Go ahead, call your boss or whatever. I'm going to be out of here, not going to jail, blah, blah, but you're not searching me. The cop is also so confused 
Because apparent, this is how much they have the cops underneath their thumb. The motherfucking cops. And remember, it's a rookie cops. It's his stop. He makes a decision to say, bro, you're drunk, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to arrest you. This is after Jay Prince Jr. allegedly tells him, yo, call him, him, and him. Yo, you don't want to do this. Anyway, to showcase to showcase some power. God damn, Pluto. Shut the fuck up, Pluto. Told my door, by the way. To showcase some power without resisting. And I guess the cop starts to realize this guy is somebody. He tells the cop. The cop tries to search him. Yo, get off me. Yo, yo don't touch me, nigga. If we go to jail, let's go to jail. But we ain't, don't, you ain't touching me, period. Don't, I don't do searches. These are the type of niggas who they walk into the club. Everybody walk to the metal detectors. He walked straight around. These are the type of niggas. I'm trying to exhibit the power of how niggas like this move and why they talk like this. Don't, don't it, like... Don't you think, like, why these niggas be talking slow and act like they run the whole world? This is why you have to listen. So apparently, J. Prince Jr., not even a father, the junior, basically tells the cop, yo, do what you got to do, but you're not fucking searching me. And some way, somehow, the police officer Says, all right, well, since I got you on, on, on the drunk driving thing, I got to bring you down to jail. You could get out right after. Okay, I won't search you. Just hop in the car, please. The cop is allegedly bargaining with this guy. Why? That's the power. Unbeknownst to everybody, the whole time J. Prince Jr. allegedly has a loaded gun on his waistband. The cops are shook. They never searched him one time. They allow him to get in the car. He complies with that. They never search him. He goes to the jail. He gets out the car. They still never search him. They let him go into the jail area. They still never search him. They find out later on. When obviously now you have processed and a bunch of other things, he had a loaded gun the whole time on his hip. That's crazy. So I'm I'm like yeah, like yo, why niggas everybody care about Jay Prince? Like yo, why is it? I get it now. If you could convince the police who are gonna process you for whatever to don't put their fucking filthy hands on you and search you when you have a loaded gun on your hip. And you walk into a jail cell and you walk into wherever they hold inmates. Y'all know, even when the cops go down to the station, the cops got to take off their shit. The cops don't go in there with all their guns on. They take their shit off, too. They let a prisoner go in there with a gun on him because they too scared of the nigga to sh search him. If the police scared of him. Why don't you think that that's why they talk like that to everybody else? Now you're going to be like, nah, that's cap. Maybe I'm lying. I could be lying. Let's see why he went to jail. Maybe I'm lying. Here we go. Hold on. Jay Prince Jr. accused of DUI bringing weapon to county jail. Okay, that, that's not the video I want to play. Hold on. They put him in handcuffs and he had a gun on his fucking hip because the police was too scared to search the nigga. If the police is scared of this nigga, Hold on, hold on. Let me see if uh, where is the video. Uh, there's 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 a few videos about it. 
know I, I know y'all gonna say I'm 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 capping. J Prince Jr. Gun jail. Fuck. Everything's gonna show the new shit. Fuck. How can I find it? How can I find it? Yeah, I can't find it. Uh, there's a news report about it. Wait, here we go. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to find it for y'all. I, I want y'all to see this shit. Because this shit blew my mind, too. This shit fucking blew my mind. Arrest, gun, and jail. Here we go. Is it this? Why is it not showing the video, though? All right, let's just read this for now. James Prince Jr., son of CEO of Rap-A-Lot James Prince, was accused of driving while intoxicated and bringing a firearm into a correctional facility, according to police. He's charged with DUI and bringing a prohibited weapon or item into a correctional facility. Officials say Prince was leaving a party, a private party, and was carrying a clear glass with alcohol in it. A Houston police say that J. Prince Jr. showed signs of intoxication, slurred speech, and unsteady stance. They warned him that he was too intoxicated to drive. They warned him. Look, think, just think about this. The police is telling him, bro, I think you're too drunk. Don't even get in the car, bro. We don't want to do nothing. He's like, it's like he's saying to the cops, fuck you. I'm still going to get in the car. Think about the mentality you got to have. Where the police is telling you, bro, I think you're... He's walking to the car with liquor in his hand. The police is watching him. He literally looks at the cop says, yo, don't get in the car with that, bro. Yo, yo, I think you're too drunk to drive. And he literally says, get the fuck out of here. And he jumps in the car anyway. They followed him and called for a, a marked car. And look, they pulled him over. Now, they're saying they searched him several, several times for a weapon. Bro, let's be honest, chat. You tell me. Cops searching you mad times, ain't gonna find a gun. They didn't search him, period. They're shook. <laughs> That's the point. So when you see Jay Prince or his son start talking, you gotta realize, I don't know what type of cartel type shit they got going on down there, <laughs> but my nigga, could you imagine you get locked up anywhere and you bring a gun into jail? The nigga brought the gun into jail. It says, at the last checkpoint, a pistol was found. No, they didn't search him till he got to jail and was about to go to some other shit. Look, they asked him several times if he had weapons, and he did not tell them. Look, they didn't even say he said no. He ain't, he ain't say nothing. He just told them niggas, you can't search me, period. When, bro, we, we black, my nigga. You can't tell a cop they can't search you. They'll shoot you, my nigga. This nigga could say it. Do you understand why this nigga is talking like that? Do you understand? Do you understand now? I, I, let me see. Oh. Report J. Prince Jr. Jail. Hold on. I'm, I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it. Bro, oh, everything has this new report. I should have put, mm, hold on. J. Prince Jr. smuggle gun jail. Like, there's actually a, a whole news report about it, which I think everybody ignored. I guess this is, look. We need to ask J. Prince, how does your son get away with getting caught with that gun and have his kind of jail? J. Prince Jr. was caught with a gun in jail. How did that nigga beat that gun charge in jail? Chat. This is where my commentary ends. When a nigga could smuggle a gun in jail, you got it. You got it. <laughs> Whatever you got going on, you got it. That's what Charleston's talking about. He's brought a gun into the jail cell. I know y'all still think I'm playing. Oh my God. Where is the real thing? Is it this? Hold on. 
as Jay Prince Jr. And tonight, he is facing charges after smuggling a loaded 9mm semi-automatic handgun into the Houston Police Department jail. According to prosecutors, Prince had just left a party at a posh hotel about 6.30 last night when he was arrested for DWI. The problem is, after being arrested, Prince was able to hide a loaded 9mm gun in his crotch, despite multiple searches by HPD officers who didn't find the weapon until Prince was searched at the jail. It doesn't happen a lot. It does happen from time to time. Usually when officers get in a hurry and, you know, they're in a rush to search their suspect. In 2006, veteran HPD officer Rodney Johnson was shot seven times in the back of the head by a man who was able to sneak a gun past officers. Officer Johnson was killed by Juan Leonardo Quintero, the suspect who shot him from the back seat of his own patrol car. Here's the point I'm trying to tell y'all once again. I don't know what's going on down there, but these boys bigger than the law. There. I'm not saying everywhere. There. They bigger than the law. I kept digging around. I said, damn, is this that much power and influence? They said, you ain't know? Yeah. I said, what the fuck? I said, well, yo, you know, it was that, it, yo, it, it was that J Prince Jr. party that, like, takeoff got killed. You know they told me? They about to throw that case out. Nothing going to come out of that. Trust. I said, what do you mean? Do we have to spell it out? I said, what are you talking about? They said, oh, I forgot. You covered the case and you thought you solved it on stream. You thought you got justice for takeoff. You don't know how it worked down here. I said, what you mean? Remember the guy who supposedly killed takeoff? They caught him because he booked a flight to Mexico. He was leaving the country. Think about this chat. The nigga who killed takeoff got caught after he was transferring money and booked a flight out the country. I said, yeah, yeah, that's the guy, yeah. They said, would it shock you if not only they gave him a bond, first of house arrest, but now he could go wherever he wants? I said, no way. They said, go check the court documents. I said, you're lying. No fucking way. I did. <laughs> I checked the court documents, chat. <laughs> Wasn't pretty. <laughs> chat, unfortunately, this takeoff shit is going nowhere fast. First thing I got showed was this. This was a relief. Patrick Xavier Clark. They have now ordered that all he got to do is show up to every court hearing. And allegedly he got to stay away from Jay Prince Jr. and Shakur Stevenson. And he's the killer. And, and don't talk to nobody that from takeoff, Kirshnik, carry ball. That's takeoff. Just talk, don't talk to none of their family. But other than that, you're good. He's supposed to submit to alcohol tests. Actually, drug and alcohol test. He was subject to house arrest at first. Remember, they caught the guy and prosecutors were saying he was trying to run. They're saying he's going to Mexico. You realize the reason why Young Thug locked up, they say Young Thug is rich in a flight risk. This guy booked a flight to Mexico. So they locked him up at first and then eventually they said, oh, no, you could go to your house. This is the document this is a document saying he's not on house arrest no more. He has quote unquote GPS monitoring, but he could go to the club still. The guy who killed takeoff is walking around free as a fucking bird. I said, huh? No way. 
They said to me, this Houston nigga, I know y'all y'all sad about takeoff dying, but nothing's going to happen. I said, no, you're here fucking lying. They said, keep digging. All right, I said, all right. And I did. I did. Next thing I found, I said, I got him. Got these motherfuckers. I know, I, I know justice will prevail. Yeah. Yes, yeah, child. I pulled this up. It's a motion for scientific evidence. Now, let me give you the breakdown on what's going on with Takeoff's case. You see, we, we're all often consumed with what's going on with someone who died in the case while it starts, but we don't realize what changes afterwards. Here's 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 a point. Remember, we don't got to get all into it. If you haven't caught up on the Takeoff stuff, go to King Academics' YouTube channel, Google Takeoff. You'll find a lot, unfortunately. We've already solved it. We've already broke everything down. The guy who was arrested for the murder, his sole defense is this. So he had told the cops, here's the funny thing, two things. The cops arrested him and charged him because they felt they had evidence that his gun did the shooting. And when he told the cops, he said he shot back. He, he heard bullets coming his way and he shot back. So he was kind of going with self-defense. Now, if you're a takeoff, if you're a Migos fan, I'm, 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 I'm sorry for some of the things I'm going to say, but I'm only speaking what is up to date in the court documents. So the new motion for uh, scientific, uh, for discovery, for scientific evidence, by the way, these lawyers, these lawyers are known for working with a particular family. Let's not say that, but you know what it is. As I said, there's something going on here. <laughs> but I'm going to leave it alone because I've realized what this is. Um... Here's this guy's story. So he already told the cops he pulled the trigger. The cops match ballistics to his gun, or they believe it's his gun, to what killed Takeoff. The guy is now, since he got counsel, and I wonder whose lawyers those are, he's now saying, did I tell y'all I shot? I don't remember that. His lawyers are doing two things. They're suppressing what he told the cops. He told the cops, yeah, yeah, I shot back. They're suppressing that evidence, which would basically be an admission that he fired the shots, not necessarily saying he fired the fatal shots, but he admitted he fired shots. And then the second thing they're doing is they're asking for all the scientific evidence. So the ballistic reports, everything. Remember, there was a bunch of shots being fired. The, the, the lawyers are saying, well, prove that it's our client that did it. Prove it's our client that did the fatal shot. Okay. So this is why there's a motion for discovery. They also want every every test they're doing on the ballistics. They want the model manufacturer, all that type of stuff. They're getting into it. But we're not done, chat. We're not done. I kept looking. I said, oh, man, no way. They had mad security cameras. Like, what the fuck? Then I seen this. This was a motion from Patrick Clark's defense team saying to the judge, motion to prohibit state from attempting to introduce statements allegedly made by the defendant without prior hearing on admissibility. So he told the cops, yeah, I fired, but in self-defense, he told them that without the lawyers and them getting to this point. They're throwing out, his, they're, they're putting a motion to throw out his statements where he admitted he fired the gun. I know, you might be like, what? This is Texas. We're not done yet. We're not done yet. The last thing. Yes, chat, I know. I know. The last thing, and I've used this term a bunch here, is called a Brady notice. So a Brady notice is where 
the prosecutor has a duty to let the defense know of anything that could be of evidentiary um, matter, even if it helps or hurts the prosecutor's case. So recently, they had to do a Brady notice and let Patrick Clark's attorneys know. So the prosecutors let their attorney know. Remember the remember the guy, or not guy, remember the person we had test all the ballistics that came back with the, because remember, there's no clear audio on who shot takeoff and killed him with the headshot. So they're going off a lot of ballistics and tests. Right? Here comes the Brady notice. The Brady notice is the prosecutor telling the defense saying, remember the guy who did all the tests that said that you shot takeoff because of this test and this test and this test and this test? Well, let's read it through. This notice concerns a potential witness in the above mentioned case pursuant to its continuing duty under Brady. Listen to this. The forensic analysis uh, our analyst, Rochelle Austin, was terminated, that means fired, from employment on this day. They were hired in 2019. And their inability to produce quality work and meet production goals and lack of attention to details resulted in their termination. You get where I'm going, Chad. They know two incidents where they messed up on DNA and they messed up on chain of custody. They basically tell the defense that the person who came to the conclusion through ballistic tests and otherwise through forensic an uh, uh, analysis or uh, uh, analysis, they were fired by us because they were full of shit. Do you get where we're going with this chat? So the guy who shot takeoff, allegedly, his lawyers are going to spank this in court. Hey, remember all the proof y'all said that he shot takeoff? We want that witness on the stand. Wait, the person who gave y'all the evidence is fired? Well, looky here, looky here. Aren't we in a pickle? Do you see where we're at, chat? Someone... Rest in peace to take off. But I don't know if justice will be served. From what, I, from what I've been hearing, Texas is a little bit different. So when we hear J. Prince Jr. and it's, it's, I ain't gonna lie, when I'm listening to him like, what the fuck is he talking about? Maybe he's talking about some shit. You need to be fucking me up, right? Because niggas try to glorify bullshit. Like, you niggas try to glorify soft shit. Niggas try to glorify niggas that ain't that niggas that's flow. Nigga, we know when niggas flow when we deal with them in the streets. We know when the nigga flow. Like, we understand that they flow. We don't capitalize off they flowness, though, because we'll capitalize off real shit. We ain't gonna capitalize off no nigga being flow weak as hell. Nigga, we understand what a nigga weak as hell. Then he a street, call himself a street nigga. He could be a street nigga, but he's still weak as hell. We don't capitalize and try to glorify this shit now. We gonna sit in and have conversations about niggas as strong as us. We don't have conversations about niggas as weak as hell. I guess I'll leave this at. I don't know what the fuck is going on in Texas. But whatever this nigga is saying and his daddy is saying. If the local authorities can't fuck with it, I'll respect it. I'll respect it. <laughs> but it should tell you when you hear this guy, you're like, why is he talking like that? Yeah, if I get caught, if I get caught for DUI. And I don't even have the decency to take my gun off my my waist and I bring it into jail. Yeah, I'm that nigga. I'm sorry. 
I'm that nigga. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right.